Do we? Yes. Oh, I don't even remember. It's already in there. Oh, well. Let's make some fart noises. Hey everybody, I'm Ray, and I'm Paul, and we are the Alchemists. Yes, we are. And today, we're taking you to school because we're going to learn a little bit more about the stout. This week we've got from Bench Brewing in Beamsville, Ontario, Mountain View Stout. This is a, you know, it comes in at 6% ABV. They're calling it a bold, roasted, and smooth stout. So, looking forward to it. Well, uh, let's uh, crack these babies open because, as always, this guy's thirsty. Let's do this. All right. I get a little bit of a maltiness yep. coming out of the can, so that's pretty much about it. Oh, that, that is dark. That is a dark looking stout. Finally. Longest pour ever. I know, God. But <laughs> thanks to the miracles of editing, ta-da. All right, well, let's have our initial taste and uh, let's find out what this beer is all about. Absolutely. Cheers, right? Cheers, Paul. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. Wow. Um, I think I've said it before. I'm not a fan of dark beers. Um, there's a particular stout that's very popular in the world. Um, I can't drink it. I just cannot do it. I can't stomach it. I can't, I can't do it. This is not that beer. It's very malty. It's got a toasty flavor to me. I'm impressed so far. What I'm going to say is it is pretty smooth. There was a lot of head on this, but it really doesn't feel like there's any bite or carbonation in this drink. It's got a nice uh, buttery feel to it, I feel. Mm. Um, the taste I'm getting out of this, in the malts, a little bit of a, a, a slight hint of maybe a coffee, but that's about yeah. it. It's not overpowering and it's a nice, easy drink. Um, I'm liking it so far. We're here to, like I said earlier, uh, teach you a few things about stouts. So uh, Ray, um, where do the stouts come from? Where does it originate from? Stouts originate from jolly old England, with the first use of the word stout referring to a beer being found in a manuscript in 1677. And it was in reference to a strong beer, not a dark beer. Stouts are an offshoot of porters, dating back to the 1700s, where a stout was considered a stronger version of a porter in terms of alcohol. This allowed for the beer to extend its expiration date and make it easier to export to far off countries. Now, in terms of stouts, um, how many different varieties are there? There are quite a few varieties of stouts on the market. And although Guinness is one of the first beers to pop into your head, when you think of stout, it is not the only style. Guinness is an Irish dry stout with notes of roasted or coffee-like flavors and is usually characterized by its light taste and heavy body. Imperial stouts are some of the darkest and strongest of the stout beers. Its high alcohol content gives off a sweeter tone, along with hints of dark chocolate and coffee. It is sometimes referred to as a Russian imperial stout due to it being exported to the Baltic states and Catherine II's fondness for it. And the oatmeal stout is sometimes dark brown or black in color. Oatmeal stout is brewed with the addition of malted oats producing a soft creamy mouthfeel and sometimes a distinctive nutty flavor. Smooth roasted malt character and distinctive malt aromas and the low to medium alcohol style makes it a versatile beer. Other styles include milk stouts, oyster stouts, pastry stouts, barrel aged stouts, and American, to name a few. Awesome. Um, and if you guys haven't noticed, uh, we are not using our regular Alkanot mugs today. Uh, we actually have a chalice style glass. The chalice glass is very similar to a tulip glass with its wide bulbous body and a goblet with its stem and wide tapered opening. It differs in that it has thicker glass walls and a thicker stem. The wide opening assists beer enthusiasts in analyzing the flavor profile of that beverage and 
like a brandy snifter, there is plenty of room to swirl the beverage to enhance these aromas. The chalice is typically used with Russian and American Imperial Stouts, but can also be used for barley wines, strong ales, and box. But uh, realistically, um, you know, I guess you could drink a stout out of anything, so it's it's not a big deal. We thought we would we have the glasses, we thought we'd try them. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, let's have a couple more sips and sure. let's see what else we're getting out of this. Oh, pardon me. There's a, there's a strong taste that sits on the back of my tongue, and I think it's that it's that maltiness. It's just that flavor is just lingering yep. in the back of my throat. I don't know if that's supposed to be that way, but that's what I'm getting. It, it definitely has a lingering, there's almost a lingering bitterness, which is not unpleasant. Um, it's not like an IPA kind of bitter. It's the, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the, the IBU level on this would be very high. I think they typically fall in the, you know, 16 to 35 IBU range-ish. It's not, it's not harsh on the hops. No. I don't taste it, to be honest with you. The biggest question I've always had was, you know, what is the difference between a stout and a porter, right? Because they're, they're both dark beers. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, we're by no means experts when it comes to uh, beer, but you know what? We, we dug up some information because we wanted to give you guys some information because, you know, when it comes to stouts and porters, there's a lot of confusion. Alrighty, so here we are with the history of porters and stouts. The beer known as porter first appeared in the early 1700s, becoming a common beverage of choice with thirsty London workers. They were essentially more robust brown ales designed to be ready to drink upon delivery. Until this time, most beer barrels were delivered young and required aging by publicans prior to serving. The early London porters were also strong beers by modern standards, traditionally around 6.5% ABV. The extreme popularity of the style prompted brewers to release different porters of varying characteristics. One of the first of these was a strong brew, which was christened Single Stout Porter. These stronger, darker stouts were also more appealing to the likes of Arthur Guinness. Yep, he's the guy who founded Guinness. So to define the difference, today there are many different styles of porters and stouts, each with their own signature characteristics. According to the Beer Judge Certification Program, a stout is defined as a very dark, roasty, bitter, creamy ale, while a porter is described as a substantial, malty dark ale with a complex and flavorful character. No, I feel really fancy drinking out of these glasses. You know, it, it, it is fancy feeling, although I kind of screwed up on the pour, so the outside of my glass is really sticky. I, I feel like I'm at a, at a uh, gentleman's club and I ordered a beer there and the glass is sticky. Ew. And you compare this with like roast duck, salmon, it's an easy thing to actually pair with food sure. because it's such a subtle taste. If I'm drinking a lager, that goes great with nachos and, and wings, mm -hmm. right? This, I feel like you got a sophisticated glass, you can have more of a sophisticated meal. Sure. So gentlemen out like there- with pineapple on it. Gentlemen or women out there, if you want to impress your, your other half, pour yourself a stout with a fancy meal and you're gonna look like an expert like us. I feel like right now I could have a cigar and one of these and look super fancy with my rack of lamb in front of me. I thought you were gonna say rack of cat. Wow. <laughs> Remember what the Humane Society told us? No more mentioning their merchandise. <laughs> I feel so refined. I don't know if it's the blazers or if it's the glass or if it's the drink, but I feel a little refined. It does kind of feel weird that we're going to chug this. But on that note, I made sure to bring a little bit of camouflage. With that being said, let us do the chugs, but Ray, give us the rules in an English accent. I don't know if I can do an English accent. Do your best. <laughs> All right. So. That's more cockney, I think, than English, but whatever. All right, so we're going to take these glasses and we're going to... No, that's kind of Australian, even. But I don't know. It's just a mishmash of whatever's coming just out. Just power but, through it. So we're going to take these. Where's your accent? We're going to take these glasses full of this lovely beer and we're going to drink it back as fast as we can on the count of three. 
three. <laughs> Alrighty then, did I ever make a mess of that one? <laughs> so, as we count down, three, two, one, check it back. Oh my god, I sacrificed my Inside! I sacrificed the shirt. That's a dark beer. When you can see it running down your neck. Oh god. It wasn't bad. Like honestly, it I was just trying to beat you, and that's the only and these are not good chugging glasses, I can tell you that much. These are not good chugging glasses at all. Um, I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna say, you know what? I thoroughly enjoyed this drink. It's definitely not a, a chugging beverage, but bench, uh, you guys did good. Um, I will definitely buy the scan. Mm -hmm. I'm recommending this 100%. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm giving you guys a four out of five on this guy. Yep. Right? Yeah, I, uh, I agree, Paul. It's a nice, smooth, um, well-rounded, um, Stout. Um, as I said, can't do the Guinness. Really enjoyed this. Um, there's a little bit of a smoky aftertaste that I get from this. I, I didn't mention that earlier. Um, I would buy it. I'd recommend it. I don't think I'd have more than two in any given night. Um, but yeah, Bench Brewing, great job. Uh, it's a four for me as well. Awesome. So we're on the same page. Honestly, Bench Brewing, fantastic uh, job. Um, we want to thank you guys for sticking around and, you know, watching our show. Please subscribe, like, and share. And with that being said, I am Paul. And I'm Ray. I'm looking at the wrong camera. And we are the Alconauts. Cheers, all. Take care. <laughs>